Hello girls and squirrels, happy Wednesday and welcome back to my channel. Hi, I'm Christina Sherilyn and I'm a vintage reseller, which means I rummage through people's unwanted items and find the most amazing vintage pieces to give them a second chance. I love styling up vintage clothing in a modern way, investigating the history of each piece, and most of all, I love the treasure hunt. So follow along on my journey and let's see what we can find. So today we're going to be talking all about vintage style collars. I recently did a video all about the different vintage sleeve types and you guys really seem to enjoy that. And I told you guys in that video that I was going to be doing another video all about collar types because sleeves and collars are all the rage this spring and summer. So I really wanted to get these videos out for you guys. Quick little disclaimer before we get started. There are a ton of different collar types. I may miss a few. I'm going to go over specifically vintage style collars because that's what's trendy right now. As always, if you guys have any further knowledge on the subject that I don't cover in this video, please feel free to leave those comments down below. I would love to hear from you and I love seeing you guys learn from each other in the comments. Also, I'm going to be putting example photos on the screen as well as the names on the screen so that you guys can see that. Another quick thing I want to tell you guys, sorry, <laughs> this is all like flooding into my brain right now. Um, I started a separate Pinterest account for all of the information in my educational videos so that when you guys leave these videos, you can go to that Pinterest page. I have each video categorized in different boards so that you guys can have that information just available to you without having to rewatch the video a bunch of times or have to take notes. All right, now let's get into it. First up, we have the Chelsea collar, which is mostly found on super wide deep V shirts. It's a very thin collar and it doesn't have any indents in it. Then we have the Johnny collar, which is a lot of times found on those knit kind of sportswear looking like 50, 60, 70 style shirts where the collar, it has a collar attached to a V-neck and sometimes the collar is even a different color, but it stops right here and the V-neck continues. That is called a Johnny collar. Then we have the Peter Pan collar. This is probably one of my favorite collars. It's just this sweet little rounded uh, collar. It's very feminine, very cute, and I just love it. And that leads us to the pointed flat collar. This is just like a Peter Pan collar in the size and like the shape of it, except it has sharp corners instead of being rounded. So that is called a pointed flat. One very trendy collar right now is the wing collar. This is the, those big 70s collars that come down to this really narrow point. They're very wide. They're very exaggerated. So if you come across 70s shirts like this definitely pick them up because they are on trend right now and use the keyword wing collar then we have the shaw collar which is kind of just like your typical collar but instead of having the little notches it's just rounded the whole way you'll find this a lot of times on uh, thicker cardigans especially men's styles then we have your typical notched collar this is just a regular collar it's got the two tips it's got the notch in it. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of self-explanatory. Notched is what it's called. And we have the Mandarin Colin. Colin? <laughs> then we have the Mandarin Colin, which come... Why do I keep saying Colin? <laughs> Caller. Have I been saying Colin this whole time? <laughs> All right. So then we have the Mandarin Caller which is found on like uh, Asian style um, kimonos, Asian style dresses. Think like a mock neck, but with like a little notch in it, if that makes sense. So then we have the bib collar, and this is another one that's very self-explanatory. It just comes down like this, looks like a bib. That's it. Next up, we have the ruffle collar, which again is very self-explanatory. It's ruffled, not much to say about it. We also have the tie neck collar. These are found on what's called secretary blouses. It's where it's got the ties right here, the very long ties, and you tie it right here, and it's that big bow. It's very 80s workwear style. Another similar collar to the tie neck collar is called a stole collar. It has almost like a built-in 
scarf. Instead of it being long ties, it's more like chest length and they're a little thicker and it's meant to just go over one shoulder to kind of mimic a scarf. Again, this is more common on vintage dresses. Then we have the Jabot collar, which is kind of like the tie neck collar, except it's just two little pieces of fabric that kind of come over to create um, the illusion of a tie, basically. So another name for the Jabot collar is a ascot collar or a scarf collar. Then we have the cascade collar, which is those, those shirts with the ruffles coming down like this. Again, it's to give the illusion of a tie, but it's very, it's like stacked and ruffled. So that is called a cascade, which is pretty easy to remember because it cascades down. Next up, we have the notched keyhole neckline. It's kind of similar to the Johnny collar, but without the fold over of the collar, if that makes sense. That's called a notched keyhole collar. Another similar collar is the raised wingtip collar. Now this is typically found on vintage dresses. It's where it's a very straight across neckline, but then it comes up in towards the collarbones and it has that exaggerated wingtip collar like found on 70s shirts. All right, next up we have the cape collar. Now this is a very large collar and it's very exaggerated so much to the point where it goes over the shoulders and almost creates a sleeve. A way you can remember that is it drapes over the shoulders like a cape. Alrighty, so let's get into some funky collars. So first up, we have the Bertha collar, which I didn't know was even a thing. I mean, I knew it was a thing, but I had no idea it was called a Bertha collar. This is basically where it just goes all the way around. It's basically just like a scoop all the way around, and that is called a Bertha collar. Then we have the Pilgrim collar, which I mean, is pretty self-explanatory, just think of the pilgrims. Um, the big, it's like two big blocks, they split in the middle and they just come down. It's very big, very wide, very exaggerated. If it's a big collar like the pilgrim collar, but it comes down to a point instead of being squared off, that is called a Puritan collar. Another common collar found on vintage dresses is the fichu with rosette. I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not, somebody let me know. Um, but it's basically like this kind of like bunching of fabric. It's usually off the shoulder. This is pretty common on like 80s prom dresses, 80s formal dresses, but it's like bunched right here. And then it kind of like comes down into almost like a sweetheart neckline. And it's got like a little flower in the middle or a little rosette in the middle. So that is called a fichu with rosette. There is also such a thing as a notched Bertha collar, which is exactly what you think it is. It just has a notch in the middle and it can look very similar to a Puritan collar, but the difference is the Bertha collar is a little higher up and shorter and wider, whereas the Puritan one comes down a little more, like the points come down a little farther and it's more tapered. Then we have the Buster Brown, <laughs> which is, probably my favorite collar name ever. So the Buster Brown is a variation of the Bertha collar. It's a notched Bertha style, but it has a tie in the middle. So I think we can all say we learned something today. Definitely didn't know that that was called Buster Brown. Now I'm gonna need like an excuse just to say Buster Brown all the time. Another very exaggerated collar is the handkerchief capelet collar. It's kind of like a flutter sleeve, but for collars and it, it just drapes down to the shoulders like that. So that is called a handkerchief capelet collar. Now, if you come across this collar and it has very defined crisp pleats in it, that is called a Piero capelet collar. So this next collar is most commonly found on 50s dresses, 50s um, jackets, and that is called the portrait collar. It's very wide. It's almost like it wants to be off the shoulder, but it kind of stops right here. It's kind of like a, what is it called? A boat neck, but it kind of like stands up right here. So it just shows a little bit of clavicle, but it's not quite off the shoulder. That is called a portrait collar. So then we have have the bishop collar. Now I have never come across this collar at all. I've never even seen a garment with this style collar, but I thought I would mention it just in case somebody does come across it. This is called the bishop collar. It's kind of like 
the notched Bertha collar, but it has like, it comes in right here and then it has two little like rectangles that kind of just drape down almost like they should be ties, but they're not. And last but not least, we have the sailor collar, which comes, it usually has a tie in the front. It comes up, up to the shoulders. And then in the back, it has that large rectangle flap in the back. Just think of a sailor costume. That's a sailor collar. Alrighty, so that does it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you learned a little something. Also, I hope I was able to keep you guys company. I don't know when this quarantine is gonna end, but I am over it and I am ready to get back to thrifting. Thank you guys for keeping me company and brightening my day a little bit. I wanna do something new just to kind of get us like engaged and kind of like talking in the comments. Let me know down in the comments below what your favorite collar is. I'm interested to see what everybody's favorite is. Also again, and if you have any further knowledge, please feel free to leave that down below. Alrighty, I'm gonna go edit this video. I hope you guys are staying safe and you're having a good week. If you like this video, please be be sure and give it a thumbs up on your way out. It really helps me out. Also, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join our family. We would love to have you. I put new videos out every Wednesday and Friday, and I will see you guys on Friday. Bye, guys.